learning how to edit more. What would you tell someone else that's thinking about coming to film camp? That they should, because it's a really fun experience, and later they might want to do something like this, and this would help them. I really like working with other people and learning how to use all the equipment. Go film camp. It all makes sense. This is why he wanted me to be here today. The main attraction is one heck of a wild roller coaster ride. So, what's the verdict? Never give up. everybody over there far away at the Aspen Shorts Fest. My name is Kaveh Tirani. I am the writer and director behind the short film Serenity. Um, I'm from Iran. I was born in Tehran in 1978, the year of the revolution. Uh, right now I'm in Oslo, Norway, where I live and work. The best thing about filmmaking is getting a group of people together and doing a big project, getting to know people, doing research, getting into a topic um, and learning about uh, the world. I love the fact that film travels, that you can see films from all over the world and hear stories from all over the world. Um, go out and make stuff. That would be the advice I would give my younger self. Get your friends together, do something low budget. It doesn't matter as long as you're making things, you're learning and training. I hope you enjoy the film. It's very, very short, uh, but I think uh, it allows you to think about some of the current problems that we have both in Iran and also related to technology. I hope you keep learning about Iran and I hope you um, keep watching movies from all over the world. I think that's so essential because movies allow us uh, to have empathy with human beings in other parts of the world, which is very, very necessary. Um, keep supporting the women's movement in Iran. Our slogan is Zan Zendigi Azadi, Woman, Life, Freedom. And one day I hope we'll be able to travel to a free Iran. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Metunin be dunya nega konin va zibayi khilqat ro bebini. Shirini va khulus hasti ro. Amo وقتی به مدرنیته و تکنولوژی نگاه میکنین چالش هایی رو در مقابل عقاید و معنویت هاتون میبینید و اکنون سرینیتی واقعیت افسوده دنیای فیزیکی و دیجیتالی ما رو در هم میامیزه سرینیتی یک اپه که روی گوشی و حوشمند شما اجرا میشه و به اینک ای آر شما متصل میشه جهان پهناوره با بالغ بر هفتانی میلیارد نفر که با تفاوتهای فاهش فرهنگی بر روی پنج قاره آن زندگی می کنن. با کمتر شدن فاصله ها اجتناب از نظام های ارزشی متفاوت از ما سختتر میشه. این می تونه منجر به وسوسه شکست در زندگی خانوادگی 
و ساختار اجتماعی بشه سلامت معنوی شما اصلی ترین دقدقه ماست به همین دلیله که ما در حال توسعه راه حل جدیدی برای لباس های دیجیتالی مختص به جنسیت هستیم سرنتی اولین هجاب دیجیتال در جهانه سرینیتی از 96 پارامتر برای سگمنتیشن جنسی استفاده می کنه که جنسیت شخصی که با اون مواجه می شید رو شناسایی می کنه هنگامی که سرینیتی یک فرد ما انسه بدون پوشش رو تشخیص می ده اپ ما به صورت ریل تایم یک هجاب دیجیتالی اضافه می کنه با توجه به عدم رعایت قوانین بین المللی کپی رایت ما قادر به مهندسی پیشرفته ترین فناوریا هستیم ما با مراکز تحقیقاتی چینی پیش رو در هوش مصنوعی مشارکت تنگا تنگی داریم و بدون محدودیت ها و مقررات دست و پاگیر کار میکنیم ما در حال آموزش تنوع هویت دیجیتالی هوش مصنوعی هستیم ما به شما کمک میکنیم برای واقعیت خود مرز تحیم کنیم و دنیای دیجیتال امن خودتون رو بسازیم دنیای را بدون محدودیت، بدون محضوریت و یا بدون جداسازی تصور کنید با قابلیت های بیپایان جایی که هیچ چیز نمیتونه جلوی شما رو بگیره با معرفی سرینیتی Hello, husband Nikita here. I made a film called uh, Backflip. I think you're about to see it. And um, I am living in Germany. I am now in Mexico. And um, filmmaking to me is mostly about experimenting, playing, telling stories, uh, triggering some emotions. And um, advice to my younger self would probably be um, just do keep doing mistakes and learn or not learn and uh, uh, yeah that's basically it so see you see you soon in Aspen bye hi everyone Nikita here in this video my avatar learns a backflip the figure in front of you is the avatar he is my clone his body was digitized from a photo of me standing in the park and his voice is the result of me speaking 15 minutes into a voice cloning algorithm. His mouth is reacting to that voice and his face listens to a number of inputs. About the backflip, I always wanted to do it but I'm kind of scared. That's why he is doing it. He might be able to do it with the help of machine learning. Machine learning means that he will practice a lot and try to learn from his mistakes. kind of like us. Like this, he already learned to run, walk, stand and other basic movements. Unfortunately, he still cannot sit or turn, but maybe soon. But maybe soon. Okay, let's go. As an inspiration, we've watched a bunch of YouTube videos. Attempting a backflip is not exactly safe. You can break your neck, or land on your head, or land badly on your wrists. None of that is nice. But it is nice to have an avatar for that. 
He can do a backflip for you, just like that, at any time, everywhere. How cool is that? I have seen some people start with a cartwheel. Maybe that's what we should do. Okay, that should do it. No idea if that actually helped. He is now probably more confused than before. Anyway, our goal is not a cartwheel. That must have hurt. We need something soft. Avatar practices with the help of a 6-core processor. It's not the newest, but it still lets him jump 6 times per iteration. One iteration takes 1 minute. This is 360 jumps in an hour, and 8640 jumps in a day. I wouldn't be able to jump so much myself. To be able to stand up, he needed about 12,000 repetitions. If he needs the same amount to do a backflip, he must jump for about a day. If he doesn't sleep, for that we need to cool the processor. If we had a faster processor, he'd probably reach his goal as fast as the YouTubers.
don't see any progress. We are already jumping for nine hours. It's nearly 3,000 jumps, and there is no result. The YouTubers say that it's all in the head. We fear injuries. My avatar gets a new body with every jump, so he shouldn't be afraid of injuries. I think the solution is, as dull as it sounds, to just continue. I'll play him some music. Balance of last day, 8,280 jumps, and I feel we're nearly there. Time for one last adjustment. Oof. What I take from this, it's not always the mind that keeps you from reaching your goals. We are capable to so much more than we expect from ourselves. We just need to practice, 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 because practice makes perfect. My avatar made it. I am very happy. Hey Aspen Shorts Fest, uh, I'm Scott Laser, and I'm the director of Ball People. I would say the best thing about filmmaking and what initially drew me to the practice is I always say it's collaborative by design. Probably something that I would say to a younger me is your voice as an artist, as a filmmaker is not something that 
develops overnight. It's a very long process. And it's one of those things that I don't know if you realize it as it's happening, but when you look back, you see threads uh, across your work. Hope you enjoy the film and uh, everybody stay safe. Thanks. All these eyes on you. The roar of the crowd. The players, the fans, you know, the officials. It weighs on you. But then once you start getting into it, once you start to work, it's really like any other court, but it isn't, <laughs> you know? Right? It's Arthur Ashe. You make it to this court, and there's a reason for that. Just run across, just run across. on court helping the players transition through the match. This year we had 850 people apply and then we invited 500 to the tryouts. So that's where we get to see them out on court. And then from there we'll do all the evaluations together and see where they sit. And then we'll make our selections. All right, two in the middle, two on each corner. Not up here, not down here, not up here, shoulder. Going both balls, one bounce. It's in the rip. Get this knee down. Release low. Then roll. Now, but the next one is like a step, step, and then another roll. Wait for the ball to hit the net. No backpedaling, right? <laughs> Gotta take it, lad. Let's take it a little serious, right? Let's go. Nice. 78, 213. Roll. It's my first time trying out to be a ball person, so I hope I get it. That's the best seat in the house, obviously, right on court. You're basically playing with them. It's a totally different world from watching it on television. The ball just flies off the racket. So actually getting to be on the court, that would be a dream come true for me. So coming here, I was really nervous because I didn't know if other people had like done this before. They played tennis, so they're more familiar with it. But I know that they have to hire a lot of people. So I feel like since there's more spots, I might have a chance of getting in. I wanted to do this for many years, and it just kind of never worked out. I'm 34 years old. I feel like life's gonna <laughs> life's gonna get going faster, and uh, you know, you just never know when you'll have another chance to do it. You know what I think is very unique about this program is the fact that they opened up to people of all ages. I feel like that you know, really embodies inclusiveness. Even if you're 60, you have that agility, you have that endurance. Why can't you be a ball person? Guys, again, we've been watching a lot of very casual running and strolling across the net. Like, again, do run. If you know already after you yeah. see them running. Okay. You and I know after yeah. five minutes. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. As the ball person crew, you spend a lot of time together over three weeks. 
and you know, Sal and I have known each other for a long time. We've experienced a lot of the same <laughs> experiences on court. We've worked together on court. Here you see this Orange Theory. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I joined it last year. Yeah. You know, these are lifelong friends that we've gotten to know over the years. So yeah, it's it. You know, we take it seriously, but it's it's a fun job. I'm trying to inspire them and by telling them, hey, we were all once young ball people too. Don't be afraid, like we're here to help each other out. At the end of the day, you, you, you're part of a team that so few people in the world get to experience. Get down low, here, instead of tossing like this, uh, yeah. no bounces. You're right. It's all right. Nice. One and two, go! Well, sometimes it's not as easy as it looks to roll and catch a ball. Stay with it. Again, let it roll into your fingers. Yep. Don't try and trap it. Take, take a few steps up towards the player. No jogging, no jogging, no jogging. Tight shoes. I gotta get you guys some real shoes. I know. No. Like, again, like Sal was saying, try and catch the ball like this. 259, that's where I was getting me. He's huffing and puffing. Yeah, I think it's just overall confused concentration wise. I'd probably score that a bit low. Definitely a better, yeah, better, better turnout than yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Well, turnout in terms of skill, ability, skill yeah. set, yeah. and wanting to be here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of those people yesterday, was like someone just dropped them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like, you guys want to try out? Let's, let's go. <laughs> I just need you out of the house <laughs> for about 45 minutes <laughs> to an hour. All right, you know the job. After you get the ball. How do you get to be a ball person? Oh, right. here, you here. try here. out. I tried out and was asked to join the team in 78, 79, and 80. My wife, she said, hey, Andrew, I just got an email saying they're looking for ball people this year. I think you should try out. So here I am. The evaluators are very fair. The evaluators uh, look for you to have fun, but you have to be athletic to be a ball person. There's no two ways about it. You cannot come out here expecting anything less. I've got this finger crossed. You know what they say about crossing too many, right? So I'm pretty confident, but you're never too confident. You know, there's a lot of good people here, so I'm always hoping. I think it went pretty well. It's pretty competitive, so you never know. Uh, I think probably not. I think I will probably not make the team. I hope so. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know what the other groups before me or after me are going to be like. You know, it's always tough competing with um, younger kids. It is very, very intense. It is not what I expected. When I was throwing the ball, I kind of threw it over the net a few times. I think I, think I can do it. I think I, I, think I will make I the team. I hope I make the team. I do think I'm going to make the team. I'm very confident. I feel confident. OK, so I'm about to open my email from the ball crew tryouts to see if I got the job. So let's see, guys. Dear Catherine, thank you for attending the 2022 U.S. Open ball crew tryouts. After an overwhelming attendance at this year's tryouts, we regret to inform you. You have not been selected. Oh, that's okay. Congratulations. We would like to invite you to be in the 2022 ball crew. There it is. Wow. We regret to inform you that you have not been selected for this year's ball crew team. I'm so happy to have been given this opportunity. Um, this is literally a dream come true. Obviously a disappointing email. Uh, but you know, there's always next year. Oh well, at least I got this sweet shirt that says ball crew tryouts on it.
I did not get chosen this year, but I'm not giving up. I'm gonna come back next year and try again. Everyone I look at down here is great. They deserve the opportunity just like I had because it's something they'll take with them for the rest of their life. And then they'll be coming back here when they're my age and saying, hey, guess what? I did this. With the unsung heroes, I think, for the tournament because nobody gives them a lot of acknowledgement. You don't even hear a peep from them. I haven't even seen them really walk in the grounds. Space Oddity, the film. Remind me, yeah. probably right. not. So, so at the center of the film is a computer. You made it through qualifying, beginning of main draw. You made it through the beginning of doubles. Today started mixed doubles. Those dead balls, we want to make sure we are sprinting to, right? We don't want to be jogging to those balls. Treat it like every ball needs to be gotten. Every ball is a loose ball that is yours. Competition, can I get to it first? Catching serve during warm-ups with Max Kennedy. A lot of people will say, yeah, I've watched tennis before. But you'll probably watch tennis a little differently now. My wife doesn't like watching tennis with me because because I, I, I look at the ball people. <laughs> I look at the way they're positioned sometimes, or a lot of times. If someone would say that anybody could do the job, I'd say yes and no, but you can't just you know step on the court thinking that you know what to do. magically appear and then magically disappear. Focus shouldn't really be on us, but for that short amount of time, everyone's really waiting for you. I'm a non-traditional artist. 
at a very early age, I started to do things on canvas and mimic other people's work. I never really found a, a joy or a humor or satisfaction in being limited to a square on a wall. And then I sort of, I, I slipped off the canvas. The world is your oyster, my dear. Let me know how I can help. Don't be touching things in the forest. The fairies don't like it. The ramblings of an old man. <laughs> His mother should take his money away at this point in time. Every sculpture or artwork I make usually has a secret thing about it. It's meant to be cartoony and happy and fun, but then there's this other thing that Almost everyone except for the brave and the curious would not find. My favorite sculpture to date is a 14 foot tall praying mantis that's eating a flower. It's located off of a children's playground. And the secret to that sculpture is that there's, there's pea gravel beneath it. And I thought as a child, I would have surely picked up a handful of gravel and hit it with it. So if one's to do that, each eyeball is a bell at a different tone. So it would probably go dun dun. And that's the super secret to one of my favorite sculptures. <laughs> My workspace is chaos. Sometimes I have to take things when they're organized and throw them on the floor so that my mind can see a random pattern, which it's trying to do. And I can't get that when it's organized. But I do see the reactions of others, which is that uh, they're appalled. And I would assume that you would be appalled by the devil. <laughs> he probably wouldn't step in. He would come into your house with muddy feet and um, step on your white couch and eat your food and not ask questions and um, probably leave the toilet unflushed. So letting the devil in the door and you have to invite him in <laughs> is about creating chaos for the purpose of the creative end. My art is an attempt to not be forced to grow up. My father always wanted me to think differently. He was a military contractor, so everything was about linear thought and working within those systems. and. I always love to play with that structure. My mother was an artist, and that allowed me, even in defiance of my father's wishes, to continue to be creative and to explore the way my mind works. My mother always wore polka dots. One of the thoughts that come to mind are bright yellow wooden clogs that were spotted and dotted with big white daisies on the top. It's 
It was in June, just prior to the 4th of July. We had gone to pick up a large stewing pot that my mother had burned up. I had uh, taken it to the car and put it on the passenger side. And she became quite angry when she came out and told everyone to get out of the car. I was to put the pot directly behind her in the back seat. As we drove, I saw a red Cadillac in a fury to get away from something in the intersection. And we heard loud air horns, and my mother was confused. As she got three quarters of the way through the intersection, the air horn got louder and louder. And at a certain moment, she was looking in the rear view mirror, and she said, Oh, Jesus, she almost got out Christ. We were struck by a trash truck that was fully loaded. It had gone airborne and landed on our car. I got out of the car because the window was open. I looked inside and my youngest brother was bleeding and my sister was fighting and screaming that her legs, something about her legs. And when I pulled her out and I put her on the sidewalk, I knew something was wrong and someone was missing. So I went back in the car. And I would say that my mother wasn't alive. The steering wheel had largely gone through or into our chest. It crushed her and the pot that she had so furiously fought with me to put behind her, saving my brother's life and my sister's. And at that moment, when I was trying to help her, I grew up, and that was the end of my childhood. Once those things occurred, you were never supposed to speak of it again. And I think that led to many years of seeking and searching for either a mother's love, answers that can't be answered, to questions that sometimes don't need to be asked. And that's the journey I've been on. We as artists have a rise and fall, and on the rise you make wonderful creative things, and on the fall you go deep into the dark. Until I understood myself, I didn't understand that depression is a cycle that's needed for the creative process. To doubt, to be negative, to want to eat oneself. It is a constant struggle. And for me, bright colors, have saved me countless hours of going into the dark. In my head, I'm 12 forever. I always heard from my ex and my father alike that I should grow up, that my mind was childish, my humor was childish, my art was childish, but it was a space and a place that I always enjoyed. I thought of Pinocchio finding himself on Jackass Island where they'd smoke cigars and laugh the day away. And I think that's a safe space for me. I was told to grow up so much. <laughs> Always told to grow up. You resent those people that try to change you. I will not be what you want me to be. Uh.
Thank you for loving me. <laughs> I can't believe you're going to use that. Um, yeah, really, really amazing. It's really, really great to watch those. Uh, how'd you like them, Abigail? Oh, I loved them. You know, the backflip one, I heard all of y'all laughing. Like, how funny was that? You know, I used to be able to do a backflip a long time ago. And I just remember learning. And so, like, that one was really fun to watch. But, like, what did you think of the ball people? Ball people was great. Um, I definitely would not be a ball person. I'll probably just sit in the stands and watch tennis. But it seems like fun for those who want to do it. You mean you don't think you could do it? I don't think I could catch those balls, no. What do you guys think? Do you guys think you could do it? Ooh. Okay, well, what about everybody else? Do y'all think you, do you think you could do it? I mean, like, we, we might have some tennis balls with us if you guys want to try and catch them. Yeah, who wants one? Who wants a tennis ball? <laughs> hey. Sorry, that was a little too hard. My bad. Okay, got That's one more. That's the next ball person right there. Nice. Um, but yeah, the ball, the ball people was amazing. Um, Serenity was really great, the film that we started off with. And I mean, just going back to the backflip one, I mean, you might have learned it when you were younger. I definitely cannot do a backflip. And if AI is doing it there, I might as well just go home and have ChatGPT do it, so. Well, I mean, but on a serious note, like talking about serenity, could you imagine like just putting on glasses and changing everything you see? Like that's kind of crazy how that's like what we're coming to. So a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And of course, we have not talked about the rocking film at the end, which is amazing with Sean and his amazing. I mean, the sculptures are all around us even right now. Um, and it was it was really, really amazing. And his style is very unique and, and awesome. Yeah. What did y'all think about his style? It was pretty cool, right? Well, since you guys liked it so much, why don't we see it in person? So let's give it up for Sean Dougherty, Felicia Hatinga, and Lauren Tolfa. Awesome. All right. It's so great to have you guys here. It's amazing to have that, you know, for the experience for everyone here. And, and it's great. It's great. To, yeah, it's great for you guys to be here. Um, first off, I'm just curious, what inspired you two to make this film? And like, how, how are you inspired making this film with them? Um, like making Sean the Ramblings of a Sculpture Artist? Uh, I think part of what inspired us was we were, Felicia and I were both kind of going, questioning our creative process and whether or not we were on the right path. I kind of both went through a lot of periods of depression and kind of doubting, like, should we be doing this? Maybe this is the wrong thing for me. And then periods of, like, this is amazing, I love this, like, and kind of wondering if it was normal, if other artists experienced that or if it was kind of just us. Um, so we wanted to explore that idea a little bit more and learn from an artist, and Sean was the <laughs> perfect person to do that. Eccentric in yes. his nature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there were just highs and lows in our creative process, and we just wondered, is this normal? Do other people feel this? And so we reached out to Sean, and yeah, mm -hmm. things just kind of went from there. <laughs> we had a special elixir, and I think that they are passionate, and I was seeking passion. I was seeking someone that, uh, or a group of people that were, um, had uh, dreams, hopes, desires, and um, we ended up pairing up at the same time with similar ideas. And I think that's very important to think about if you go forward with an idea or a thought or a thing that drives you, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Find people that are passionate about it. Also, yeah. your mentors, the people that you choose to let you into your brain, your ideas, they're gonna be some of the most important people you ever deal with, find good mentors. And it's easier said than done, but look at success stories around you and chase it. Yeah, of course, and you talked a little bit about your highs and lows, and so we just want to ask, like, what was your favorite part, like, about filming this film? <laughs> um, for me, the whole production process was my favorite. I love shoot days, um, and I think the plexiglass scene, 
where you can kind of see with the credits. That was definitely my favorite. Um, and we had like what Sean calls happy mistakes. So happy <laughs> Beautiful mistakes. And it's so, true. Um, yeah, we were only supposed to do one plexiglass, and then the spray paint we started with, and we're like, it's not smudging, it's not smudging, so we need to change it up. And the second piece of plexi yeah. came out and both made the cut. So, um, yeah, my, there was just really fun My hands got moments. covered in paint, <laughs> and we just left it that way all day. So, like, <laughs> in the scene, I'm just, like, covered in paint. But at the end of the day, it was just, like, peeling stuff off. Yeah. Yeah, and I think for me too, the mirror room with the, the montage segments was my favorite, where Paint we had Sean floor. change into yeah. I think, three different outfits. Mm -hmm. We're like, let's just play, let's just have fun. So we turned some music on, we all wore costumes because Sean has a chest of just costumes. Craziness. So the yeah. whole crew was dressed up and yeah. it was pretty fun. I think for me it was creative play. That I have a, my studio is 5,000 square feet in Lakewood, Colorado. It's in the 40 West Arts District. But I tried really hard, it's off the offbeat, to make these things in place in a space. And on Saturday mornings, people from a coffee shop would wander in. But you'd rarely have like that feedback that you needed that would drive you forward as creative until these guys showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and not only did we have fun making it, but also just the interaction of bonding with people and being creative. 100%, 100%. Yeah. All right, so you guys want to make a film together. You make, you make this amazing film, but when you go into, like, what are your goals? Of, like, what are the goals you want to have with this film? What's, like, the story you want to tell? Like, how did you figure that out, and how did you plan that out? Hmm. Um, I think initially our goal when Felicia and I first started was just to learn and to explore and play around. This was our first film that we made together, and I think we just wanted to try it out and see what happens. We didn't really plan on submitting to a bunch of festivals. We were like, let's just, let's just have fun. And sh she was still in film school. We had free equipment. So we're like, let's just do it. Let's see what happens. And I think we ended up with something that we really weren't expecting. It turned into something a lot, a lot better than I think we had initially. It, it's a lot deeper than I anticipated mm -hmm. on multiple levels. The filming, the audio, the content. Because it, it, it it's called the ramblings of a sculpture art, Sean and I rambled. They have many hours of me rambling. And so to see what evolved out of that was very interesting. I think the story that we chose, or part of it about my mother, and that process was going in my head because of an auto accident that happened two or three years ago on I-70 where a truck went errant and under a bridge and killed a series of people. And then the governor got involved and there was a conflict about um, what he was gonna be, uh, his prison term was gonna be. And so that whole process, I sort of relived it on TV, and then we talked, and it just evolved out of that, something like a, a little bit out of a dream state, you know, the first thing you think of when, you're, when you wake up. So, it evolved. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. just, I think it was just a very organic process, mm -hmm. and it was something that Lauren and I wanted to do together, um, and it was something that we wanted to explore, and we kind of had the same internal question of like what is this creative process and what are these feelings we're feeling and so I think it just all evolved and it's, it's ever growing it's like a live thing when you're filming and when you're creating a project it's always morphing but that's the fun part about documentary mm -hmm. there was one other thing if I might say it is that yep. we met uh, about three years prior to the film to, to filming where my studio is open and I do these flower making things and take the can out of your hand and then we make it into one of 70 different things, blah, blah. And we made a piece of art, a pinwheel or flower. And then we had that conversation. I think it's stuck in your head, that interaction. And so things, ideas percolate. They have to rise up and be valuable to you. You'll have tons of ideas, but there's something about a thing that will call you, an idea that has merit. You either have to send it out into the ethereal world, keep talking about it, keep thinking about it. It's a thing that wakes you up, or it's a thing that drives in the back of your head when you see it and follow those ideas. Yeah, so, Sean, as an artist, you know, how did you feel when these other artists of, of a different form asked you to be like the star of their short film and like did you ever see yourself being like the subject of a short film no and yes i guess because i do a lot of i used to if you ever want to really get good at something the, the, like the films have said practice 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 but in my situation for making things out of nothing something out of nothing 
and doing that creative process was always very important to me. I used to busk her. So I'd take her to the street, do it over and over and over, and hear the worst comments that anyone could ever say to you and the most positive ones. And after you get through that, then you can get to this place or this space that you're comfortable in your own skin doing things, and it just becomes second nature. Um, I will say there were moments later on and I'm glad that they have their art and I have my art. And I didn't, I wouldn't, I, inter I attempted to negotiate what was said or what was, you know, in the proof. And as a friend said to me, if I had gotten a hold of it, I would have screwed it up because it was their vision mm -hmm. and it was their beauty. And um, I ad-libbed and threw some things and we had fun. But it's really someone else's passion seeing that come together. Um, I'm separate from them in the creative process, and you did, thank you, thank you. Amazing work. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Okay, so watching the film, um, it, was, it was very clear that you were, you were kind of like speaking to yourself and you were telling your story of yourself and like the life that you've lived, and, and you were kind of telling the story as filmmakers. But, I mean, these ideas and these thought processes change over time. So. You, as the selves that you are right now, what could you say to yourselves, I don't know, 10 years ago about like what you were doing, or even five years ago about what you were doing, and like what would you say to yourselves? All of us? Yeah. Um. <laughs> what would you say to your younger self? I don't self? know what I was doing 10 years ago. I wasn't thinking about filmmaking. Um, I came into film school um, 2019, uh, fairly green, so. Yeah, I don't think I would have anything to say to my younger self 10 years ago because <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about this stuff, but uh, yeah. What about you? I think I probably would have said, just don't be afraid to go for it. I think there was a lot of doubt on whether or not I should try filming. Um, yeah. I originally wanted to work in the music industry and that shifted over and I was like, this might be a huge jump. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna try it. And I think, yeah, just encouraging myself to do that um, and encouraging myself to speak up and ask more questions and um, just be more fluid in that way, I think is a good thing. I would say, because I've had this conversation with myself many times on different levels, is if you can live long enough, you can be a lot of people in one lifetime. You can be beautiful, wonderful people that you would never even expect and you wouldn't even talk to now. But you'll change and you will grow in ways that you can't even consider and life will form you and it will be good, bad, and ugly, but just try. Try and fail and keep trying and keep failing because every time that you fail is a, is, a, is a ridiculous word. It's about being creative and it's about play. Play is creativity. And as you grow older, people will continually tell you not to play, but that's where you end up in these situations as a teacher where I have to tell a kid to put down the, the crowns or the tools or the paint until I explain what we're doing. But I have to always pull adults to pick up the crown or the paint to start. And even then, I literally have to take their hand and put it into it and say, draw a cat or something. But it's that process that, that play, create, there is no such thing as failure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Thank you all so much. I mean, it really means a lot to have you guys here. It really means a lot. Awesome. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we hope you all enjoyed hearing from the directors and the subject of Sean and the rambling of a sculpture artist. And our time is almost over, but we do have a few more things that we want to show you. Um, we are going to um, need your help. So are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, so in honor of our 32nd annual Shorts Fest, Aspen Film invited creators to show the world how they are independent by nature. So we're about to show you a selection of finalists, and then we're going to ask you to vote for them. So it's just short 32-second clips, 32 seconds for 32 years. Um, but yeah, we're just going to show this quickly, and then and then you all will vote for him. Ready? Yeah. Okay, let's roll the clips.
1970s and a product of the women's liberation movement, independence was the only natural choice. My guiding thought was always to rely on myself and not allow anyone to push me around or tell me I was not worth the same as my male counterpart. After giving birth to a son, I raised and encouraged him to always see women as his equal, yet hold strong and never lose himself. Neither gender should dominate the other. Independent by nature, I am not. Independent by thought, I am. Like a rock in a raging river, I am stubborn to anything that pushes me where I don't want to go. Like a flower, I grow wherever I am planted. Like moss fused to a rock, I am loyal to those who I hold close. Like a sunset painting the earth, I am unique in my expression. Like a tree, I stand tall through it all with strength. Like the sound of the birds chirping, I bring laughter wherever I go. Like the clouds in the sky, I am always moving forward. Like a stable mountain standing alone, I am independent. What does it mean to be independent by nature? Is it being free? Is it doing what you want, when you want? Not necessarily. It's about being you, regardless of what other people think. It's hanging out with friends. It's doing the extreme. It's doing nothing at all. As long as you're being you, you are independent by nature. For me, it's driving fast, drifting when I know I'm not supposed to, chilling in the couch with my dogs. It's supporting my friends while they find out who they are in life. It's being me, myself, and I, and there's no one I'd rather be than myself. Independence. What makes us independent? Is it our car? Is it our job? Is it the money? No. I am independent because of my mind. I am independent because I am passionate. And because I am independent, I am allowed to be me. I want that. I am independent by nature. I need to move to think. I need to think to tell stories. And I need to make stories to connect to others. I mean, that's why we're alive, right? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Nick, you have always been independent by nature. 
but I haven't seen my grandmother in 10 years. I thought I would add a little magic to the family reunion, you know? My family doesn't share your sense of humor, Nick. They haven't returned any of my calls. You've gone too far this time. No, Allie, wait, please, I can change. Sure doesn't look like it. Hey, buddy, what did I tell you last week? No spells in sight. All right, y'all, so if you guys could please just scan this QR code and we're gonna have you guys vote on your favorite submission. And the winner will be announced Sunday, April 16th. So, you know, you better make sure to, you know, keep updated on our social media to make sure that your favorite submission wins. Um, yeah, the vote really matters. You know, the person who wins this competition could end up winning a camera, runner-ups win gift cards to help their film equipment. So this is really beneficial to all the filmmakers out there who submitted and put themselves out there. Yeah. Awesome, all right. Thank you all for coming here. Hope to see you later this week at the festival. Just a reminder, students and teachers go free actually, so um, there's more information about that on the Ask the Film website. All right, thanks y'all. Peace out. <laughs>